Okay, we have what's called another Haunting Hour Vlog. Uh, this week we have Near Mint Condition, written by Eric Patterson and Jessica Scott. Yep, two weeks in a row. And d directed by Ken Frith. Yeah, I know that code written by them and directed by him. Hey, doesn't count so promising after the <clears throat> last time, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this episode is um, weird. It's more like an episode where how much you like it depends on how seriously you how seriously you think it should be taken. And, but here's our big premise. Basically, we have this dude who is played by Luke Benward. Uh, his name is Ted. And he's a big collector guy. He's a big nerdy, like, collecting crap. And one day, and get a uh, mint condition robo bear uh, called Mangler. Apparently, there's an old cartoon called like Robo Bear or whatever. And there's one particular you know character who's really popular from the toy, but but they he, the toy got recalled because check them, because some mysterious death that happened around him and Gorkar. Ted here didn't believe in that crap and just got one of the last few that were that were in situation. You know, serious. And of course what happened, creepy things start happening and then they believe a teddy bear is gonna to try to kill them. Especially after I actually attack one of my friends. So in essence the cop going about a killer teddy bear. Now it will really about the cup of code, I am I am mostly sure it's not meant to be taken seriously due to the climax. But at the same time, it does kind of take it so seriously for most of it because it does a lot of creepy stuff with the bear. You know, like when Doug attacks a friend, played. Both we have to go get from a creepy tent atmosphere, which oddly enough works. Mostly, mostly because it's not, the the bear is on screen too long, it appears when it needs to appear. Because sometimes you're talking about it down the road. And oddly enough, when it appears, it is sort of creepy, even though it is a teddy bear. A robotic teddy bear, but for some reason it just looks so medicine and the atmosphere sort of makes it kind of work. But uh, really, it was really depending on how scary you, know, you choose to take it. But if you hear a concept and you think it is the stupidest thing in the world, you're not going to take any of it seriously. You're going to think, this thing is scary, why are they making it scary? And then, and then when you get to a climax, you'll probably wonder what's going on. And the Emco does seem in indecisive on whether it wants to be serious or not. I'm gonna say no because I think I think near the end they realize that you're not gonna take this seriously, so I stopped doing so. And to be fair, it's not like they play it for a lot of drama, it's just for a lot of creepiness. And to be fair, they done they have done stupider things seriously. <laughs> you know what I mean? And not to mention that this is the kind of thing where playing it comedically we won't work in the same way as you know, want we going back I don't know, it won't work the same way, so playing it pseudo seriously probably the best way to go. But you know, the fight I I actually did rather enjoy the gut the code vocal because I chose not to take it too seriously. But at the same time it does have a good atmosphere that gets me caring about what is going on and uh I think that's a better one I've affected. I think one of the episodes where I went in completely blind. Um, all I knew was that Luke Benward was in it. And then, then I saw the Robo Teddy Bear, then I realized I saw him in one of the ads for the season. So I went, oh, so now I knew that. So I think I saw that with our presence, so I'm going, mm, okay then. Now, I can't tell you what I'm going to climb that because it is a sight to behold. If you look at that and think the outcome I do take it seriously, you're stupid. Honestly. But, um, 
That's where the story it goes. Um, it, it, this type of code go, it's going to deviate from certain expectations in a good way and a bad way. And it also kind of saying what you think it might be. It's for living dummy from the scenario. It does come creepy. And one guy going, oh no, things alive. And the other guy going, like, no way. And here it's different because a normal circumstance is like something, basically, big, big character will go, oh man, thing alive. And like the brother, I think, would go, no. And here it's the other way around. The brother, once he attacks the friend, he goes, oh man, I think the thing might be a killer. Because he heard that urban legend and he kind of believes, and the main character does not believe him. I do find we have that brother start believing it, but it might just be because of that legend. And, uh, and it's kind of like a painting issue for some, if you think it moves a little too fast and it's like, like, right away. So, the actual day, like, long ago, few could be shot for that because they go, maybe it's live. Not too long until we get a POV shot until the thing alive. We just need to know what it's going to do. And if you read any of the Night of the Living Dummy books or you know, the episode of any of these shows that got akin to it, you've probably seen this type of episode. The difference in the how we do it, which in a creepy way, I think, mostly worked. I do think the main character. Uh, Name gets less scuttled by the myth, especially when you realize that he will play a character who dated a girl named Teddy. Lovely. But, he can get a little dickish, like at every turn, he go, nope, 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 even when it probably should get a little obvious to a certain point. And, and I actually thought they were going to go around making him sort of a dick, like, and have to kill him off. Nope. The cap code, uh, calling it a happy ending would be false. It's not happy, so much negative, bringing defeat, but say, better things are more normal. But at the end, um, well, I won't spoil it. All, all I will say is that there is a roll credits moment right before the credits. <laughs> but, um, but. But yeah, I compose. But the main character don't get a little better, and honestly, given what he has to deal with with his brother, his brother, I'm fine. I like fucking around with the toy sometimes. You yeah, like, you see why he wouldn't have to play them at first. Uncle, he basically a nerdy character, and he played by Luke Benward, and if you've seen him in a couple weeks of things, that hard to believe, and. And still, if you have no idea who this guy is, and you're thinking of the, looking at your first time seeing him for real, you, you, I don't think, guess, I don't think it was too hard to believe. I tried to roll with it, oh, he's wearing glasses, okay. And he does, he can perform it, done. At first, it's a little weird him talking about the lessons and shit, but once the creep stuff starts happening, he just starts saying normal things, like, oh, it wasn't completely irrational. Whatever, and if if you if you're more familiar with him than I am, and you if you're about familiar with him than I am, you might find it weird at first, but you'll get used to it. But if you think he look and the guy, nope, he can't be a nerd. Yeah, uh, the kind of like thing that really gonna affect your whole enjoyment of the episode if you don't get to. Uh, but at the same time, I did technically enjoy this more than last week. Boy, because I think the content is kind of entertaining, to say the very least. And the creep, it gets genuinely creepy at times. It's not hugely creepy due to limitations, but it kind of works, I suppose. I'm not sure what I can really say right here. Okay. Um, that's about all I got, you know, it's like. The story done like again like a few parts for it for predictable and I suppose that might affect your enjoyment as well and then a couple parts that DA from my expectations, like but it does hit a lot of the beats, but it does something kinda of unique and it can go. Overall, the castle works, I suppose. I mean it it it's about a killer teddy bear and if you 
And if you're willing to enjoy something like that, it is a thing. It's not so much whether you can take it seriously or whether you can accept it and enjoy it. <laughs> people might, some people look at a Western episode automatically assuming they'll be stupid and but okay, it's that ring, and I can only imagine what reaction to this is going to be like. But I imagine if you're willing to accept the fact that both of these sound stupid, then you might enjoy it. It'll, and I do think, I do think, as far as I'm worried about too, this is another one that kind of on the similar side, and kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like compare it to, but it's more on like, it's on that line between Gilly and Sirius, I suppose. So yeah, uh, but better than better can just a better than relax probation because it's not give you that much. Okay, that much. Primarily, because this one, it even though like that, like that, that goes interesting because it does have well that moment is awfully a comedy. You know, right from the beginning, this is one where it looks like it, it were, but I don't know. I compose I objectively that long, but it. If it's, it clearly still get the end, you shouldn't take it too critically, and it's not like they play it too much for drama, just for creeping and stuff. Either way, it's still entertaining, regardless of anything like that. So, overall, I did like the episode, because it was just fun, you know? That been, uh, the ending definitely, uh, it's interesting. Uh, not, it's not a huge ending, it's just something I wish I could talk about by I don't got a lot of time here, so uh, my blog retrospective at the end of the game will go into that. Go. So. Um, that's all I got. Uh, yeah, good. In a good episode, if you can sort of accept what is the concept of it all. Um, next can't. I think next week is called. Actually, I I'm not gonna say it, but. And let's go, we got another interesting guest star next week, if that's true. Either way, interesting, getting out every app code of the has got something creepy in it. Even if it's just a pumpkin head, or even a bear can be a little creepy. Like, it has something semi serious in each of the app code of the scene, even the sillier one. So, I think that's a very interesting direction we're taking. It probably make up for lacking in where we're going to a lot of creepy episode, given the little fun. Again, but, so, we'll see. Oh, yeah. Like I said, if you get, if you get a to a concept, you'll enjoy it. Good luck. I enjoyed it. Go, uh, see you next week.